First touch, Zion Williamson, it goes and one. He was forced, but he knows they need to get some easy baskets and he wanted to see more steals. And the solidarity was moving prior that to the would game. be the sound that you hear down under. Strong finish. Yes. They need to move the ball back. Oh. Zion Williamson, an explosion. Drew Holiday. Whip ahead. Oh, Zion oh. Razzle Dazzle to Lonzo Ball. And to be involved in their community with grassroots organizations that promote. Obviously, uh, you know, only only 15 minutes tonight. Did, did you feel okay? Did you want to go back out there? Was this just them kind of kind of holding you back? Nah, they weren't they weren't holding me back. Uh, I was yeah, I did want to be out there, but um, you know, we're just working my way back into my flow. That's all it is. How tough is it to uh, play when you know your minutes are going to be as limited as they were? And how long do you think it'll take for you to finally get that flow that you're used to? Honestly, I don't know how long it'll take. Uh, I guess maybe a couple games. It is frustrating, but it's not so frustrating because, you know, like, they could probably not even let me play, but you know, I'm able to play, so I'm going to do as much as I can while I'm out there. Last night was probably one of the most confusing nights of basketball I've ever seen. And I'm not talking about the Lakers versus Clippers game. That that happened how I expected it to happen. I'm talking about the Pelicans versus the Jazz. If you guys remember, I made a video maybe two or three days ago on Zion Williamson's status. And a lot of you guys commented on that video saying, Mike, why on earth are you making this video? It's so unnecessary. There's no question in our minds that Zion Williamson's gonna be good to go for the game. It's not like he's recovering from injury. It's not like he is recovering from a torn meniscus still. He's had three and a half months to recover and he's lost weight. If anything, he's more good to go than ever. The only thing that was really stopping him is the fact that he had to leave the bubble to go home to attend to a super vague, urgent, personal family member that he is not disclosed to anyone and then he returned. It's not like he stopped on the way to get some lemon pepper chicken wings from Magic City, meet up with Jack Harlow and say what's poppin' and then drive all the way back to the bubble. He came back, he quarantined a little bit, he got tested, he's good to go, he got a practice in on Wednesday, he was prepared to play on Thursday. So, what happened? Why did what happened last night happen? Because we're getting a lot of reports recently and I'm as confused as you are. Because last night in Zion's interview, it seemed like he was at peace with the whole situation. And if you pay attention to this morning, there's a bunch of narratives saying that Zion Williamson is pissed. And I'm hearing these narratives from people like Bleacher Report. I'm hearing these narratives from people like The Athletic. And then I'm also hearing it from The Dan Patrick Show and from Yahoo Sports. So I need to assess the validity of this statement. And before we assess the validity of this statement, guys, please take a moment to smash that like button, subscribe, and turn my notifications on. We're making this push to 400,000 subscribers and I would absolutely appreciate each and every one of you guys on the train with me now that the NBA season's back. Also, we are doing our very first murder documentary on the death of Lorenzen Wright. It's gonna be dropping tomorrow in the morning. The link to that's in the description down below. It's gonna premiere, so make sure you set a reminder for that. Finally, I'm giving away multiple copies of NBA 2K21 on my Instagram and on my Twitter. The links to that's in the description down below. And make sure to follow your boy on TikTok, on Twitch, and all of those other socials in the description down below. Now that we got that out of the way, cue the intro. Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? After the New Orleans Pelicans game last night, where probably one of the most interesting and shocking moments in probably the past year for the NBA, when we saw Zion Williamson completely hoop it up, going for 13 points in 15 minutes on six for eight shooting from the field, the Pelicans were literally a score away from winning this game. And bear in mind, if you look at the Pelicans on the Western Conference standings, you don't have to be a genius to know they need to win each and every game and they need some like divine intervention to allow the Grizzlies to lose a few games and to hope that the Blazers lose a couple of games in order for them to sneak into the NBA playoffs. Now, mind you, you need to also bear in mind 
that the NBA literally bent over backwards and created probably the most sketchy NBA restart possible in order to include the New Orleans Pelicans. And what I mean by this is it's very weird to me that there's 13 Western Conference teams in the bubble and nine Eastern Conference teams. Not that I have a problem with it, it's just not organized is what I'm trying to say. And a huge narrative that NBA fans have created that just makes a lot of sense and I don't really blame the NBA for doing this is that the NBA did whatever it took to get the New Orleans Pelicans in the restart because Zion Williamson is well dude we all want to see Zion Williamson play you don't have to be a genius to figure that out on top of that the Pelicans have a fairly favorable schedule in order to potentially eke in to the NBA playoffs and dude the NBA is possibly salivating at the idea of a LeBron James versus Zion Williamson first round matchup. The world wants to see it. I don't think the world's wanted to see anything more since maybe 2009 when there was a possibility of Kobe Bryant and the Lakers meeting LeBron James and the Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. Shout out to Dwight Howard for ruining that, but I digress. There's reports that Zion Williamson is pissed about what happened last night, and these reports didn't come out last night. They came out earlier today, because if you go to Zion's interview, and the response to the fact that Zion didn't play last night a full load of minutes, I don't think that this report is all that true. Look at the way Zion talks to the media. Obviously, uh, you know, only only 15 minutes a night. Did, did you feel okay? Did you want to go back out there? Was this just them kind of kind of holding you back? Nah, they weren't they weren't holding me back. Uh, I was, yeah, I did want to be out there, but uh, you know, we're just working my way back into my club. That's all it is. Honestly, I don't know how long it'll take. Uh, I guess maybe a couple of games. It is frustrating, but it's not so frustrating because, you know, like, they could probably not even let me play, but you know, I'm able to play, so I'm going to do as much as I can while I'm out there. Now, Alvin Gentry came out and he said he looked good. He had some good moments, and obviously, we are much better and a much different basketball team when he's out on the floor. But with 7 minutes and 19 seconds left in the fourth quarter, Zion Williamson checked out for good, and he didn't come back. Now, Gentry said, of course, we wish we could have had him play down the stretch, but he'd used the minutes that was given to us, so that's the way it is. We weren't going to stick him back out there. Zion came back out and said, as a competitor, I do want to be out there doing whatever I can to help my team win. And he said the obstacle to more playing time is not even just conditioning, it's just getting my flow to the game back. This is the NBA, it's the best players in the world and you want to feel comfortable. I don't want to hurt my team more than I help them. So the New Orleans Pelicans Executive Vice President of Basketball Operations, David Griffin, explained that Zion's minutes look the way that they do because of the Pelicans' minute structure and the young star's departure from the bubble to deal with the family matter, which in turn puts him behind the rest of the pack. Griffin went on to say that unfortunately, because of the situation with his family, he was called away, and it was a very legitimate reason to leave. But unfortunately, he's 13 days removed from the group in terms of following that plan after not playing basketball for four months. I appreciate the fact that everyone wants him to play 40 minutes tomorrow, but I can promise you that he's not going to. He will not play significant minutes in the next game, and he may not in the following game. Quite frankly, this is all about the ramp up time and he didn't get the benefit of any of the things that his teammates got for those 13 days. So again, this is going to take some time. If you ask me as an NBA fan, I can't connect the dots here. There's no logical explanation that I could give you for Zion not playing. He looked really good out there. He was well conditioned. He dropped weight. He hasn't played in a basketball game in three and a half months. His meniscus tear is literally a story of the past and the NBA bent over backwards to get the Pelicans inside the bubble. So why didn't he play? Not to mention, his entire team looked fairly good. Did you see what JJ Redick was doing last night? Did anyone pay attention to that? My man had 21 points in 26 minutes, three for eight from three point land, and was plus eight in his plus minus. He had four rebounds and three assists to go. He looked like Duke JJ Redick out there. Drew Holiday looked fairly decent, although he was minus 13 and he shot 50% from the field. He also put up 20 points. Lonzo Ball was doing Lonzo Ball things. He was dishing out assists. He was grabbing rebounds. Yeah, he only had four points. And yeah, he shot two for 13 from the field. But still, I feel like if Zion Williamson was out there, the Pelicans would have had a chance. 
And I'm sure all NBA fans agree that the difference between 15 minutes and, say, putting him back in for the final two minutes of the fourth quarter probably wouldn't have affected Zion that much, and it would have possibly gotten out the win. And that's what the narrative is also saying. A lot of teammates apparently, I don't know if I believe this, a lot of teammates apparently feel like if Zion was out there, they could have gotten the win. And you know what? I think that part is the truth. I feel like the media is being extremely aggressive saying Zion is pissed because I can't imagine Zion being pissed at the situation. But the entire situation reminds me of a story and that's gonna bring us to the conclusion of why Zion didn't play last night. And again, this could be a little out there. So I want you guys to let me know in the comment section if you agree with this take or not. Are you ready? Here we go. Who remembers the last dance? Michael Jordan's second season. He broke his leg. The Chicago Bulls were doing everything they could to keep him out that second season. But despite missing 64 games, Michael Jordan came back and willed the Chicago Bulls into the playoffs with a 30 and 52 record, which is the fifth worst record of any team to qualify for the playoffs in NBA history. The Bulls didn't want that to happen. The Bulls thought, okay, we got a punt on this season. There's no point in making it to the NBA playoffs. We might as well tank and try to get Jordan a nice little teammate. And that's not what ended up happening. Jordan didn't want that to happen. And I can't help but feel like this scenario is eerily similar to what the Pelicans are doing because the only logical explanation I can come up with for Zion not playing last night is the Pelicans are tanking. They probably want LaMelo Ball on his brother's team or something like that. I don't know. That's the only logical explanation I could come up with. And here's why. If you were tied with another team that you must beat in the NBA bubble, when the NBA bent over backwards to try to get you in, mainly so people could watch Zion Williamson play, and you aren't playing him with two minutes left to go in the game, when he looks good so far, he's only played 15 minutes, he isn't recovering from any injury, he just left the bubble, only had one practice in with his teammates, and that's the only rationale for not playing him. If you're not playing him in those two minutes, when you're tied, Dude, the only logical explanation I could come up with is you're tanking. And you can let me know in the comments if you think I'm being crazy. That's the only explanation I could come up with. I was absolutely livid last night when I saw they weren't playing him. And I was even more livid when I found out what the excuse was. Alvin Gentry said it was out of his control, which I believe him because if Alvin Gentry makes it to the playoffs, his job is saved. You know, there's no talks about putting him on the hot seat or whatnot. So I believe Alvin Gentry. When I was watching the report last night, apparently the reason Zion wasn't able to play because the medical staff vaguely said that he needs to be on a minutes restriction last night. Dude, why? There's no reason why. There's absolutely no reason why he should be on a minutes restriction. That's why I think they're tanking. There's no other, there's literally no other reason I could come up with. So let me know. I want to hear what you guys are saying in the comment section down below. I don't think Zion's pissed. I feel like Zion knows what they're doing and he's frustrated. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section because I could be wrong. Maybe there's something I'm not looking at here and I admit that I could be wrong from time to time. But after what happened last night, I must admit I am so freaking disappointed. I was hoping that we would see Zion final two minutes do something crazy to welcome us back to the NBA season, but we didn't get that. Aside from that, I'm your boy, The Flight Mike, and I'll catch you guys in our next upload.